I think you're going to enjoy this video a lot. When we are talking about freedom, we have a whole lot of ideas in our minds. In the current world view, we see a few different visions of uh, freedom, but in general, uh, people have quite a libertarian idea in their mind that they can choose to do whatever they want. And when they choose to do whatever they want, they feel they have the right to do it in the way that they do it. And ask ourselves a few questions. Great Let's also talk about uh, Buddhism. Buddhism as a mental discipline is also often called uh, religion of freedom where the freedom of the mind or the soul in western concept is uh, an essential part and then we come automatically to talk about concepts like uh, nirvana and samsara which are all concepts that have to do with the freedom from suffering buddha talked about the four noble truths and he said like well a lot of problems can be resolved at the moment when you start thinking and realizing uh, from the perspective that almost everything we do creates some form of suffering anywhere, somewhere. And by learning to control our actions, we can minimize the suffering that we cause. And as a result of that, we can come to a sort of realization about the nature of suffering and eventually extinguish the suffering. And as a result of the extinguishing of the suffering, we enter nirvana. In that sense, nirvana and samsara are not so much different other than a perspective. So when you are a, well, what can I say, a samsarist, and you learn to overcome your sufferings, then eventually you become a nirvanist. And the fact that people very often, they look for nirvana and all kinds of great feelings by themselves, they forget that Buddhism actually meant that you are free from your emotional defilements and in that respect also your happy and loving feelings are to be seen as a defilement because they limit you in your freedom of thought and being and they cause suffering. For instance, if you're long time happy, the long time happiness exhausts your heart which can cause you heart problems from which you die and have pain and you can suffer. Different than, for instance, Hinduism, where they say you have to go through all kinds of cycles of reincarnation to find eventually a realization. Uh, Buddhism, to a large degree, saw the extinguishing process as a resolving of uh, karma. And for Mahayana Buddhists, especially like in Tibet and also in Tiantai Buddhism, the idea of resolving karma was not so much an option to do that before all other sentient beings were being uh, had resolved their karma. So you would go out as a last, you would dedicate your skills all the time on self-hating, salvaging other people to help them to bring freedom. And that means that there will be positive karma and negative karma because they would be regulating the production of karma specifically for the purpose to get better and better in what they are doing and that is basically what spiritual warriors do Taoism does the same you are creating the tools to create the kind of karma that actually helps you realize your Tao and in that sense there is this great Tao, Ta Tao and there is the small Tao and the small Tao is creating the kind of lifestyle that actually works to help you do your job properly being an immortal like what I'm doing through these movies 
and through my work in the clinic and my online classes. So in a way you can say that the creation of suitable karma is a form of professionalization and that is actually much more close to your daily life than you realize. And when we talk about mindfulness, in that sense, it is more about how purposefully can you live and how little can you live from your feelings and your emotions. And what we see in most mindfulness courses, people are be being made aware of their feelings about all kinds of things, which is the opposite of mindfulness, because it means when you feel all kinds of things, you can resolve them, you can let go of all kinds of feelings, like in psychotherapy, but uh, you are not actually creating the kind of positive karma that you would like to do because the resolving of an emotional issue doesn't take away the behavioral pattern that actually creates negative karma through which you became unhappy. So eventually a new unhappiness will come about. No, what you want is you want to create a sort of destiny for yourself in which you are going to have the skills to develop your own karma. And that's for all spiritual warriors all over the world, in every culture, is more or less the same. And there is another, another actually interesting, interesting about Nirvana. There's another, oh. uh, because Nirvana is supposed to be beyond space and time, which is something after, as an after achievement. While in Taoism they took the concept also, and they called this Uji, which is uh, an something that is without polarization that is not something yet so it is before time you can say that nirvana is a transcendence of life while in taoism it is the origin of existence so there are main differences also in the way how that is being perceived in taoism and buddhism so in buddhism you develop towards nirvana and in taoism you return to the source the unpolarized whatever so summarizing, we can say that uh, samsara is uh, the place where you become and in nirvana is where you are beyond the becoming. So you have already become something and as a result of you having become something, you're not becoming anymore. In that sense, Buddhism is also very interesting because it has ideas which it actually shares with uh, Taoism uh, about life and namely that is that Many people are afraid of dying, so death is seen as a marker before which you have to overcome all the limitations of your fears and your angers and your feelings and instinctual behaviors so that you can come to the purposeful creating creation of karma for your next life. So you basically program yourself for your next life. This is basically what you do within Buddhism. While in Taoism, uh, they say, well, there's not only the fear of death, which is in the way for people, which limits their freedom because it creates instinctual behavior, but there's also the fear of life. Uh, people are not fully embracing life. And as a result of that, they also try to get rid of it as quickly as possible. So they look for entertainment and escape. And as a result of this entertainment and escape, they have they are building all kind of negative karma. So they basically create problems, diseases, uh, tensions, burnout, uh, arguments with uh, the people around them. And they are being driven by this, well, predetermined, non-willed automatization in themselves. In Taoism, we talk about, again, another vision on freedom. And we're going to explore that one uh, now. In Taoism, instead of asking the environment uh, to give freedom and space for ourselves, uh, in Taoism, we usually try to adapt ourselves so that we find freedom in the space that does exist. So the space and the environment and the way how people behave and the limitations that are put onto us, like rules and stuff like this, these are uh, similar like what the pacifists in Europe and America thought of in the 70s and the 80s. They are environments where you have to adapt to and to hide into, you can say, so that 
you wouldn't be really noticed for what you are, which is in Taoism called darkening of the light. Your own personal light as a result of your results in cultivation, they are something that is indeed personal, which is also very similar to our legal idea about freedom of religion, is that your religion is personal. And as a result of that, doesn't need to be shared with other people. So you don't have to convince other people from your religion and your beliefs. The thing Taoism sees as important to adapt to is in effect the disharmonies within yourself. The self itself is not the one thing, but it is something that is constructed from a lot of different kind of mini selves, you can say. These are the spirits of your internal organs, your muscles, your teeth, your ears, your eyes, your nose your toes, your nails, your armpits, uh, the hairs on your, you know, whatever place of your body. These all have their own spirits and they are sort of a consciousness that is intertwined with each other in complicated ways, which produce this emergent sensation of being one self, while in fact you can talk about a united self. The measure of unitedness depends if you experience yourself as a free agent, because that's basically what it is about. If you are not a free agent, then you are driven by external factors or by internal impulses. When you are too hot or when you are too weak on the inside, in both cases, the internal system is disharmonious. And as a result of that, there are struggles going on in the inside. And these struggles on the inside, they provide you with inputs and outputs that are probably not wanted or in most cases maybe can be acceptable as an outcome but you know on the long term will go off the rails. What it basically tries to convey is that the constraining factors and the constraints, this is uh, you and me, uh, these two are mutually dependent factors and when we are aware of this mutually dependent uh, situation we can find harmony by making sure that we float like a fish in the water so the idea by finding harmony is to create or to co-create basically the environment in which you can flourish instead of uh, become dependent and unhappy in Taoism uh, they talk about uh, Ling Bao which is the contract which you have with nature uh, or Tao in that sense. You are born, uh, you are a composition which is part of nature and you have the contract, the obligation you can say, to actually become what you are supposed to become. In most cases we are not becoming what we are supposed to become. So our UN sheet, as is what we are supposed to become, is actually the, the layout, the plan of what we are supposed to become, uh, does not come true, so it becomes inaccessible. And as a result of that, we basically grow blind and we develop desires and impulses and so on. And we are driven by them and we move further and further away from reality. And for this, by the way, I have to talk about the Ching with you another time. And at the moment when uh, this is uh, happening, um, we create this harmony and we become, well, confrontational and we are looking for our boundaries and we are trying to push our boundaries away and our boundaries have a limitation. That's why when we are doing Taoist practices, we never go to an extreme. We try to fill up the space that we have and then from there gradually, you know, gain more control over our periphery and as a result of that, make the periphery grow with us. So the change always is very gradual. Uh, because gradual change is controlled change, while sudden change is usually uncontrolled, so you don't know where it is going to end up with. As a Westerner, it gives the impression as if you are a willing prisoner within a system because of your interdependencies. But in reality, that is not so. You have a freedom, you have a freedom of choice, you have a freedom of action, you have a freedom of want. You just have to come to a sort of agreement with the limitations that you have and that is probably also why a political system like the Chinese political system is possible and why people who find happiness in the West also find happiness because they actually accept the system as a given 
and as a result of that they play with it within it you can say and find the space to do the things that they really want in, in effect we can say that it is our feelings and our desires that are continuously limiting our freedom and that is very similar to what we talked about before in both Locke and in, uh, in uh, Immanuel Kant. So you see that all over the world people actually do more or less agree that it is us that puts restraints on our freedom and it is not so much the political system. Our political systems could be very practical. We could develop a system where we can equally share uh, power and wealth and prosperity and food and also freedom because we can help each other to find more freedom within ourselves the problem with our current society is that freedom is buyable so you can buy freedom by having enough money to create a situation where you can you know seclude yourself from the horrors of the daily life and that is of course not a good thing because that puts a lot of pressure on people you know that don't want to be constrained and this is also where the conflict with between autonomy and uh, libertarianism comes about because libertarians they want to express and do whatever they want and if they want to cut in, the ha in their hand to make a scar they should be free to do so and if they want to spit in your face or wear a gun they should be free to do so while in effect like the autonomous autonom autonomians uh, say is that your self-regulation makes that you find uh, freedom and as a result of uh, self-regulation you come to your senses and say like well I don't need a gun to self-regulate myself because I don't need to defend myself against myself by continuously holding a gun against my head if everybody self-regulates in a way which is based on certain kind of moral values then at that moment there is no need for governance there's only a need for sharing of values and uh, products of course and i think my next video should be about that topic but i think before that time i first want to talk to you about the aging so the next video it will be about the aging well i actually hope you like this video and if you really enjoyed this video then uh, please uh, be so kind as to press the like button and also to become a follower of my channel either on youtube or on facebook or on uh, patreon or all of them and it is best of course if you join the patreon account and uh, become a donator so that i can uh, finance making videos like this it is even better if you decide to actually become autonomous and uh, sign up for our channel and as a result that make a political statement by choosing for a system of healthcare that is out of the control of governance and financing organizations like uh, banks and insurance companies so that you can you know change the system from within I, I have of course in, in my own clients things, even with my own wife sometimes I hear sometimes things say that